Monero has had some improvements made to it after the hard fork that it had last Saturday. Now, this hard fork does not result in the creation of any new tokens. It's just upgrades to the network's speed and privacy. So we're still using the same tokens. Don't believe in any new tokens claiming to be a fork of Monero in that sense. Now, as far as the upgrades go, the default ring size for Monero transactions has grown from 11 to 16. This is probably the biggest uh, announcement here. So instead of having 10 decoy signatures added in with your real signature, there's now going to be 15 added in, which of course increases your anonymity set. Now, if you want a deep dive on ring signatures and how the technology of that works, then I highly suggest that you check out Breaking Monero Episode 2, and really, I recommend that you check out all of Breaking Monero. I mean, it's probably, if you like to get education on cryptocurrency without reading the white papers, you know, without reading a bunch of boring stuff like that, and you just prefer to see a video, uh, Breaking Monero is probably, like, obviously the best series there is on Monero, but I would say it's the best series that there is of any cryptocurrency explaining like how it works for both the layman and like they go a little bit deeper and like more technical to maybe what is beyond you'll be able to understand. I know a lot of uh, this kind of goes even over my head. But anyway, this is a uh, really good to check out. But essentially, the larger that ring signatures get, the better your anonymity is, right? The a 1 in 16 chance of guessing whether or not a transaction belongs to a stealth address or not is going to be better than a 1 in 11 chance. Now, the ring signature itself involves some cryptography that has to be put onto the blockchain with your transaction, which is going to increase the space. It's going to increase the size of your transaction, and that's going to increase the fees and the verification time for that transaction because now other people have to download the updated blockchain to check it. And that's why if we look at the history of ring size increases in Monero, they've typically just been small steps, small increases, and usually they're only done when it's absolutely necessary. Like if you look at the correlation of these increases and like, you know, why they were increased, uh, it's typically whenever some kind of analysis was discovered that would allow an adversary to reduce the anonymity of the network. The ring sizes are still fixed, just like when there was the update to ring size 11. So you can't use a ring size larger than 16. Like in the past, all of those ring sizes were just minimum requirements and you could go higher if you wanted. And the reason that they moved on to fixed sizes is to help with maintaining anonymity. Because let's say if we know, maybe we know that you like to use a ring size of 420 every time you send some Monero. Maybe you're some dude that's shipping weed to people on the dark net. <laughs> so you use 420 because you think it's clever, but it actually makes you stand out because now we can actually see what your transactions are on the Monero network. Now, one thing that stands out about this ring size choice of 16 compared to the older ones is that 16 is not a prime number. All previous ring sizes uh, or minimum ring sizes were prime numbers. And if you look at the Monero Research Lab chat log from uh, the IRC that was on October the 20th, 2021, uh, you can see that initially, uh, one of the, they were saying to do either 15, because uh, that would be a less than 50% rise in the input size or verification cost, or 17 uh, for aesthetic purposes, right? Maintain that prime number. So of course this was suggested at first, but if you actually read through all of this, which I'll probably just link it in the description of this video, uh, there was a lot of discussion about binning. So now the idea behind binning, if I understand it correctly, is that it allows you to choose your decoy outputs faster 
by choosing several recent transactions as decoys that are close to each other on the blockchain instead of choosing each output from the entire blockchain, like scanning the entire blockchain for all of them. And I think that is why, uh, again, if you read through the IRC, uh, the question of ring size pretty much came down to 16 versus 22 and how confident they were, you know, how optimistic they were about binning being a thing, them actually being able to implement that into, I guess, a future update of Monero. Because then they could maintain the selection of 11 inputs, but instead of it uh, just being like 11 signatures, it could be 11 bins, each containing two signatures for a total of 22. So uh, that would have also meant that Monero would have had the same ring size as Wow Nero, which I think would have been pretty funny. But that's something that maybe we're going to see in the future of Monero. I would certainly expect it if um, they were able to implement, uh, what do they call it, sublinear scaling. Uh, and TripTech, I think, is a algorithm uh, or something like that that might be able to let them do that to basically increase the ring size exponentially. Like they're talking about um, 2 to the power 6, 2 to the power 8, so 64, 256 without also blowing up the size of transactions. And speaking of the size of transactions, this hard fork also implements Bulletproofs Plus, which decreases transaction size and verification time. So Monero was already using Bulletproofs to hide transaction amounts uh, and transaction sizes. So this is just a more efficient version of that. Uh, it's about five to 10% faster, right? So not a huge increase, but hey, any increase in the protocol's performance is great, especially because the number of transactions that have been going on on the Monero network over time have actually been increasing exponentially. Like it's, it's kind of funny that, um, and this was mentioned on uh, like the Twitter spaces, like the uh, announcement that was on Twitter when like around the time that the hard fork actually went live, uh, that the number of transactions in Monero increases exponentially, but obviously the price doesn't, right? It doesn't really moon. But you know, personally, I think that that's a good indication of it actually being a good currency, right? Like currencies tend to have fairly stable prices, which, uh, you know, I guess you could say Monero's price is stable-ish, but the uh, network is actually able to continually handle this volume and transactions. Which leads me into the last big change that was done to Monero transactions, which is view tags. And this can actually reduce wallet sync time by 40% or more, which is awesome because if you actually use Monero and you don't just you know, hodl it, you've probably dealt with having to wait a long time for your wallet to sync. I know I had to wait a while for mine to sync after the update, which by the way, in case this wasn't obvious, a hard fork requires an update to your wallet and to your nodes. So make sure you do that before spending any Monero, update and sync your wallet, update and sync your nodes. Uh, so anyway, with these view tags, you now have these one byte view tags added to each transaction using a shared secret that only the sender and the receiver of that transaction know. So now when you sync with the blockchain, you can more accurately identify transactions that belong to you. Not perfectly, of course, because with a one byte signature, there's bound to be some duplicates, right? That's not enough information to uniquely identify you, which is the whole point. We don't want to do that, uh, but if a transaction's output doesn't have your view tag, then you know for sure that you don't have to calculate it, uh, which like I said, that reduces the sync times by 40% or more in Monero's wallet. So the best crypto just keeps on getting better, boys. And I hear it's on sale right now for around 163 a piece. Sounds like a good deal to me, but then again, I'm not a financial advisor.